This conference will now be recorded. There you go. Welcome everyone to the July Town of Ocean Ridge regular meeting. Kelly, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Ayla? Here. Commissioner Hutchins? Here. Commissioner Cassidy? Here. Vice Mayor Cos? Here. And Mayor Hugh? Here. All right, let's please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you have the agenda before you. Are there any additions, deletions, or modifications? And if not, someone would like to make a motion. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, presentations and proclamations. Kelly? Um, Ms. Elizabeth Martin here. Yes. Right here. Um, I'd like to thank Commissioner Cassidy for being here today. Um, she's been with Palm Beach County Commission on Ethics to give a brief overview of the Commission on Ethics. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, uh, members of the public. Thanks for having me out this meeting, uh, this evening. I'm Liz Martin, and I'm here to speak about the Commission on Ethics and our goal to enhance the public's trust in government and with that build a culture of ethics in Palm Beach County. In 2010, long before my time, the Commission on Ethics was established as a result of a grand jury recommendation in 2009, following a number of ethical issues in our county, some that led to criminal charges. We were created to provide oversight, transparency, and accountability for more than 10,000 elected officials, public employees, and advisory board members in the county. We service 39 municipalities, many of which sign up for this service. That just means we administer and enforce the county's ethics laws using the principles of fairness, clarity, and common sense. We also support a culture of ethics within county government and encourage civic participation. We value honesty, integrity, and character. Everyone under our jurisdictions have to take our training from county employees and elected officials to our 39 municipalities. We also have jurisdiction over the lobbyist registration, principles and employers of lobbyists, as well as vendors. Our commission is independent of any county municipal government, and instead we are governed by a group of five commissioners, members of the community who are chosen by independent groups, such as the Hispanic Bar Association, in conjunction with the F. Malcolm Cunningham Senior Bar Association and the Palm Beach County Bar Association, the Palm Beach County Association Chiefs of Police, the Association of Certified Fraud Investigators, Florida Atlantic University Ethics Professor, as well as the League of Cities. The code is a 12-page document that creates a backstop to enhance public trust by ensuring that public officials and employees conduct themselves independently and impartially, that they do not use their office for private gain, and they also should disclose voting conflicts. Most often you hear about gifts and give reporting. The key to a successful ethics program is education, information, and prevention. That's why I'm here this evening. My goal is to educate the public on who we are and what we do. In addition, I take care of outreach, education, and social media. Likewise, I provide training for community organizations and professional groups. Our goal is to also be available to train on ethics in government, and you also can peruse our advisory opinions. We have 540 to date, and five answers which should prevent ethical misconduct from becoming criminal misconduct. While the commission has statutory authority as a quasi-judicial code enforcement board, uh, we issue letters of reprimand, letters of instruction, and in some cases, fines up to $500 per violation. Our ultimate goal, though, is to educate those in our jurisdiction to prevent violations before they occur. They occur. Our motto is, ask first, act later. Our advisory opinions, gift forms, voting conflict forms, and outside employment forms, as well as all of our complaints are on our website under the databases tab. In closing, our code of ethics is designed to further the public's trust in local government. We can only do our job well with the public's support. In doing so, please remember your solemn duty to consider the ethics of your actions so we can live in a community that values ethics. If you have questions or concerns, like to speak with someone in our office, we're here to help. Please call 561-355-1915. You can follow us on Facebook or Twitter at Palm Beach, well, I'm sorry, PBCCOE. And our website is palmbeachcountyethics.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. 
are you part, is your commission part of the state's ethics commission? No, we're separate, separate from the states. We are here just from Palm Beach County, although there is a state ethics commission as well. So for maybe members of you, you might also have additional reporting requirements. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Kelly, the 13th annual Kids Fit Jamathon proclamation. Yes. Okay. Whereas the Town of Ocean Ridge takes special notice and acknowledges the exceptional service Digital Vibes has provided for more than 14 years to our citizens with high potential by children, and whereas in 2010, Digital Vibes was founded to reach out to underserved youth in Palm Beach County by mentoring them through games, fitness, technology, and the arts. And did, whereas Digital Vibes partners with more than 200 local after-school sites, community-based organizations, and summer camp programs serving thousands of children each year, and whereas Digital Vibes serves all children within and beyond, even beyond Palm Beach County, and whereas Digital Vibes has hosted events such as Let's Move Palm Beach County and programs such as wellness workshops, fitness jams, and digital expressions where children can create songs and videos to express themselves, and whereas Kids Fit Jamathon is the largest kids dance fitness concert in the nation. And whereas Digital Vibes has grown a following national, nationally and has viral dance video on TikTok with over 42 million views, bringing national and international attention to Palm Beach County. And whereas Digital Vibes will hold its largest event yet this year with dance fitness, healthy activities, and snacks, and dance performances by local students where the winning sites of the competitions will take home a, prize, a cash prize. Now, therefore, I, Jeff Pugh, Mayor of Ocean Ridge, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, July 17th, 2024, as the 13th annual Kids Fit Jamathon to be held at the South Florida Fairgrounds in the city of West Palm Beach, and urges all citizens to join me in congratulating and celebrating Digital Vibes on their 13th Kids Fit Jamathon celebration. Thank you. All right, I'd like to, like to read the next proclamation uh, myself for a very true treasure of the town of Ocean Ridge. Uh, the proclamation is whereas Elizabeth Betty Bingham was born on July 21st, 1929 in Baltimore, Maryland, and whereas Betty Bingham moved to Florida in 1971, and whereas Betty Bingham started her career in banking and worked her way up to bank officer, and whereas Betty Bingham worked on a travel agent with Lantana Travel for 14 years after she moved to Florida, and whereas Betty Bingham has been involved in the town of Ocean Ridge as a resident, appointed board member, and elected official. And whereas Betty Bingham currently continues to serve as an appointed member to the Board of Adjustment. And whereas Betty Bingham is well known for historical knowledge of the town of Ocean Ridge after more than four decades residing at 1 East Ocean Avenue. Now, therefore, I, Jeff Pugh, Mayor of the town of Ocean Ridge, Florida, by virtue of the authority vested in me, do hereby congratulate Elizabeth Betty Bingham on her 95th birthday on July 21st, 2024, and I proclaim that to be Betty Bingham Day in the town of Ocean Ridge. <laughs> I hear it to set my hand. Come on up, Betty. Let us know. I know you have something to say. recommend the kids fight program because that does more good for children something i was also involved in all my life and i wish we had more people working with children in the same generation as far as i'm concerned i'm chugging along well fantastic <laughs> the town is is lucky to have you betty well i wait until i get on me and your mangoes are delicious yes oh betty you got the there's a couple of gifts for you. From the town. So we want him up here in front of the commissioners. He can come up here so he can get his picture. Can I stand in between two? You may. Stand right in front of both of me and <laughs> Hope you enjoy them. I wrap them in water. Yeah. So, so you get home and, yeah. and you get more. Oh my God. <laughs> because you have that. Huh? I get it. And a cup. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. 95. Thank you. Yeah. Now you know those kids programs are fantastic. Thank you so much, Betty. We love you.
All right, so moving on to the announcements. Uh, Kelly, want to read these now? The meeting schedule for the next month is as follows. The meeting schedule is the budget workshop, which is got edited on at July 25th at 11 a.m. There will be another budget workshop on Monday, August 5th at 2 p.m. The regular town commission meeting on Monday, August 5th at 6 p.m. The community standards hearing on Tuesday, July 2nd at 10 a.m. Planning and zoning meeting on Tuesday, July 16th at 9 a.m. And tentative board of adjustment meeting on Wednesday, July 17th at 9 a.m. All meetings are held in the commission chambers at the town hall. The town hall will be closed Thursday, July 4th, in observance of the Independence Day holiday. And residents who wish to sign up to receive important notifications and news, please sit up on the town's website or call the town hall for assistance. All right, time for public comment. All right, Terry. <laughs> Terry Brown, former guys. So I'll save my comments on the budget activity until you were more into it. I know you just got started. But I wanted to uh, remind Betty that many years ago, my wife and I, Lucy, um, went on a long weekend romantic trip. With Betty? <laughs> you didn't let me finish. Oh, OK. When Betty owned her travel agent, she booked a vacation for us in the Cayman Islands. Oh, wow. And we had a great time, and we're still together. So you know that she helped keep that passion alive. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> See how many lives you changed, Betty? Uh, how many lives Betty's changed? Yeah, yeah. You used to book plenty of travel trips, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Christine. I'm Christine Schulte from Seven Adams Road, and I'm here to talk about um, a topic that's really a bit annoying for us regarding Adams Road. And um, first of all, I have to apologize to uh, the vice mayor. I am not trashing um, Beachway at all, but uh, okay. we've been we have an hour street. It looks like hell right now because we have a whole collection of huge trucks that are unbelievable. They don't respect any sign that is, is at A1A, right? And uh, they just floor the accelerator because they don't want to go to Beachway with the lights and with the bumps. You know, uh, I can understand that, but we don't have the lights and we don't have the bumps. And um, recently, well, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of um, oil stains on the street and cracks. And, you know, it doesn't improve, um, you know, the, the owners of house, houses on, on that street. It's looking pretty bad. And I know that uh, the, um, the owner of that, those seven townhouses, you know, did uh, resurface the, the road in 2015 before or after the CO and whatever. Well, it's gone. And um, I, I have seen so many trucks, uh, you know, they floor the accelerator to the sign of uh, on uh, Old Ocean. And I've seen them, you know, just run into the signs and continue to their, wherever their job is, is you know, in the area. And I don't know what we can do about this. I'm not asking. I'm not asking for bumps or anything. I'm just by myself. I haven't talked to my colleagues, you know, about this. Uh, the other uh, homeowners. Um, and I would like to know um, if you have a line in the budget for resurfacing some some uh, uh, streets. And I assume that uh, Adams is, is uh, you know, a town uh, street, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're going to destroy everything in no time, you know? Um, how, do we, how do we handle this? And, and how often is there money in the budget to resurface a street? And how often can it be done? Well, the, uh, we're going to have the town manager come look at it. Because her report states that really we didn't have to be there was no need to repave the street. So we'll it's have the town true. manager go out and look at the street uh, and see about repaving it. 
Yeah. You want to investigate bumps? Well, we did talk about that when we had our old ocean committee, um, and Adams was a, an area of concern for yeah. people. Is there enough? So I think places we there's no drive links that. though to put the bumps in. Well, let's have the chief do a yeah. street study. Yeah, I can place a speech trailer there too. I know we used to have a permanent sign there. Yes, yes. I don't know about preventing trucks, but we can, I can pay special attention. Some of them trucks. are so heavy that, I, you know, yeah. it's going to be a mess sooner rather than later, right? And and sometimes they want to do a U-turn on our driveways. And I'm there, if I'm there, I look at them like a hawk from the balcony because they will destroy our driveways. You know, we have these uh, red bricks just on top of, of sand, you know, uh, it's um, it's not it's what can I say? It's not one of the better streets in town because of that, you know, because of the traffic. The, I have seen so many trucks just destroy any sign. I'm surprised that the stop sign at, on Old Ocean is still standing because they they run over a sign and they keep going. Way they cannot make the left, so they. I know. I know. Uh, but e even if they come from, you know, uh, to that area to do some delivery or whatever, they they don't want to do bumps and 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 and, and uh, lights. We'll have a chief look into that. Yeah, it would be nice. And then um, one more thing, there's uh, because I heard about this recently, uh, across from Seven Adams and at the corner of um, the, the private street, you know. Uh, um, David David Lane, right. There's a um, blinking uh, um, site that we discussed before um, that was there with um, uh, a sign to check the the, the, uh, the speed of, of these trucks, right? That's what I was saying. There was a permanent speed. I could bring, uh, we have a portable speed trailer now. Right, because that. I've been told by our, um, our maintenance person that's there every Friday doing work outside, you know, he says that sign needs to be taken down because it, it emits radiation and it's not healthy so well, maybe you're standing under it but pardon me i don't see it yeah well you know anyway. i'm just quoting what i've heard yeah. and obviously it you know it's related to cancer well nobody needs that mm -hmm. so if it's been flashing for some time with you know so if it's not used why don't we remove it right well, thank you for listening. And usually, you know, I don't, um, I don't speak, uh, you know, um, to the commissioners in, in general because uh, uh, I try to fix things personally, you know, by phone or whatever. Okay. Uh, I think. But this is what it's for. Yeah, it's because from 2015 to now, it's nine years. And and for example, um, when we switched, uh, when. Some of the owners uh, switch um, a big, the whole air conditioning. There was a crane there that was yeah. beyond, I mean, beyond gigantic and, and left a lot of uh, stains. And, and our um, maintenance person has told us, we can't clean that. It has to be repaved. And I was told that the town only repays, repays every 15 uh, years. I don't know whether that's, that's true, whether there's a schedule but it's looking really bad, you know. All right, we'll definitely look into it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Anyone else for public comment? You didn't get enough. <laughs> Two things. One, how many people here will remember our fight against too many signs along the roadway, metal signs, when we got our beautiful wooden signs? Why do we need four signs approaching the stoplight? on A1A to tell people to go to Federal Highway, to go to I-95, that that's a bike path, you turn and a sign for A1A. That's number one. They could have done it all with one sign. Number two, they were obnoxious enough to put one of the signs on my property, which is practically covered by greens and no one can read it. Now I want to know who in Tallahassee has a sign business. <laughs> I couldn't tell you that. <laughs> uh, I would rest this business on big trucks. Maybe they wouldn't build such big houses if we make them bring smaller trucks in the town. I don't know. But we got to start either giving uh, parking permits, which they pay for, to help repair the damage they do. Because 
it's gotten to the place where people don't want the trucks in their driveway because of the oil. So they go over and park in front of somebody else's house, which isn't really quite fair. Thank you, Betty. <clears throat> Anyone else for a comment? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Um, Britt Flanagan, 5556 North Ocean Boulevard. Um, this is the third year that the Ocean Ridge Garden Club has been able to send, um, in this year, 11 campers to the Wakaiva Youth Camp. Uh, over the years, I cannot tell you how grateful I am to have a town and town offices and officers, police officers, be so helpful and supportive of community efforts and projects like this one. And yesterday I was even, I was very touched because beyond doing their job, this town does have a great sense of caring. And I saw that in action yesterday. From the moment where we arrived and Sergeant Gary Roy came and opened the bathrooms so that we didn't have to traipse 11, 10 to 12 year olds for one more bathroom stop up to the beach to um, Courtney Hammond, who saw heard saw me come in and heard remembered what was happening, who came out with fish food for the koi in the in the pond, um, to Officer Deborah Boyle, who came with Dash and greeted the kids. Um, it was such an outpouring of kindness, random acts of kindness. I didn't ask anybody to do it but it just happened naturally. And I think sometimes we look around us and we're always looking at the negative, but yesterday was a true positive. And I also wanted to include Kelly because she has always been there to help me set up all of our meetings, pre-meetings for the camp, counts, uh, kids and their parents. Um, but it was a beautiful thing. So thank you to everyone who works as hard as they do in this town to keep us safe and to make this town the beautiful town that it, that it is, but also to be able to show some random acts of kindness, which we don't often see in this world. So kudos to all of you. Thank, so thank you. you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay, public comments closed. We'll move on to the regular agenda items. Uh, Ms. Town Manager, you wanna start off with number nine? We have to oh, I'm sorry, we got approval agenda. consent agenda. I skipped over that. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Moving and second. Any other discussion? Any public comment? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Now on to the regular agenda items. Consider approval of <laughs> West Waste Pro contract renewal and approved contracted rates for fiscal year 25 through 29. Revenue and expenditure report. It's all under the Chris Oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. Uh, in 2019, the town issued a request for proposals for solid waste and recycling collection. And on um, May 6, 2019, the town awarded the contract to Republic Services. Waste Pro assumed responsibility for Republic's solid waste and recycling collection contracts in Palm Beach County. And including the town's agreement in late 2019. The town agreement is scheduled to expire September 30th, 2024, with the town having the ability to extend the agreement for one five year term. In discussions with Waste Pro regarding the five year extension, Waste Pro has requested an annual increase not to exceed 5% per year based on the current rates. The town's agreement specifies that Waste Pro was only entitled to an annual increase of an amount not to exceed 3% commencing on October 1 for the five-year extension. However, Waste Pro in their co comments and their conversations claims that they can't provide the current level of service with only a 3% annual increase over the next five years. That is due mostly to the cost of increases over the past five years far exceding the 15% uh, year-over-year uh, -year. It appears based on communication with other Palm Beach County local governments and research on solid waste collection increases in the state of Florida, an annual increase of not to exceed 5% is not an unreasonable amount given the economic factors driving the cost of waste and recycling services, including but not limited to overall inflation, the current rates only being increased roughly 3% per year since 2019, 
and the current market conditions for labor, equipment, fuel, and other operating expenses. Accordingly, the recommendation is to approve the First Amendment to the agreement with Waste Pro for an, in, with an annual increase on the rates not to exceed 5%. All right. Kelly, the, I mean, uh, Lynn, the, it says not to exceed 5%. Is it limited to actual inflation as long as you know it's above 5 or, or is it just going to be 5? Um, I'm just curious. I, I couldn't find it. It's spelled out. Uh, it looks like with the uh, draft agreement as um, put together by the town commission, it just includes a flat 5% as the rates, this rate sheet. Um, I do know the previous contract had a um, increase of CPI or not to exceed the 3%. So. Um. Okay. Are there any other questions for Lynn? I do believe uh, Chris from Waste Pro is here in okay, case you have any questions from him. How about 2%? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Uh, so we um, assume the the uh, contract when we purchased Republic back mm -hmm. in 2019, and it was a fixed three percent over the cross, you know, over the course of the five years. Um, we were up to over five and a half, almost six percent for a couple of years. No one could foresee what was going to happen in the future. You know, we didn't know what was going to happen with COVID. You know, we didn't know COVID was coming around the corner. So um, we just felt that um, we just want something to protect us and and be able to provide the best service we possibly can. Um, you know, we give out 3% increases on our, on all of our wages every year, just the cost is going up. And uh, we just felt that it was something that we'd like to discuss. Well, yeah, congratulate. I mean, you guys really do an excellent job for the well, town of Ocean Ridge. It. Really do. You have a great staff. I just want to say, first of all, you know, getting to everybody, but you have a really great staff that we work with all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, we communicate, you know, just any issues, which we have very few of. You know, but um, when when they call, we're you know we're trying to do everything we can to get there as soon as possible. Thank you. Yeah. So how, how do we protect the town? So let's say we go five percent, and then year two five percent, and year three five percent. Meanwhile, inflation goes down to one percent. So what do we do year four or five? So we're not opposed to um, adjusting it annually based on the index. Now that's something that. I don't know if that's per the agreement, if that's able to happen, but we're, you know, that's what we're open to do. That's what, you know, we kind of prefer to do a, you know, year over year analysis based on the index, not to exceed 5%, but if it comes in less then it is what it is. And we, we just want to be transparent and fair, you know, you know across the board. Yeah. So I can't speak. I know that um, maybe I think Lynn might have a little more input on that is, because before it was just a fixed rate over five years. So um, I don't know, I mean, is that possible? That's possible and that's fine with me. And I actually think that's what the original agreement was, was a- Well, that sounds like a heck of a better deal. Yeah, it's quite a per year. Yeah, yeah, just the 3% uh, cap was the only issue is it was an adjustable rate each year based on the CPI of, I think it's the April C, was the April CPI, but not to exceed three. Right, so we're gonna do that, but not to exceed 5%. Yep. So we're, that's a much better deal, so straight 5% every year. Did, you, one did we draft this? What's that? So, uh, one the line amendment? In the contract. Christy? Christy? Um, go ahead, I'm sorry. We just need one line added to the contract? Well, the, the way it was originally envisioned would be similar to how we did the first five years where the, the rates were spelled out and then there was an adjustment based on what would happen. So we got the next five year rates, which I think is what drove how this was drafted so that those rates are the rates for the next five years, but they don't exceed 5%. But, and, and, but under what so, circumstances would they be less than 5%? I think that's what we're... Right, right. 
in I think the calculation, some of them actually are below 5%. But if you want to do go back to what the old language was and do it on an annual basis that's not to exceed 5%, we could do that based on a CPI. I think that's the way I to go. That makes sense. Yeah. What do you think? Ainer? It works for you. Yes, sir. We're still capping it at five. Not to exceed five. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I would like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can we do that? Change we can, that? Yeah. You, mm -hmm. we can make that clear. Absolutely. So, does anybody want public comment? You might have to do public comment real quick. Public comment. Oh, Terry Brown, Harbor Act. Stop. The only comment uh, I was concerned about is how is it going to affect individual unit rates? Um, you know, and, and we get, <laughs> we pay taxes for the solid waste authority. That's on our tax bill. And then we pay this rate. So, uh, what, what would the impact be on individual family rate? Do we know? Can you calculate that? Well, we Arizona. pay what two hundred sixty-five dollars right now. Yeah, it's way up there from when we first moved here. Yeah. Twelve bucks. Yeah, but how as, long ago was that? Terry? As Come far on. as Waste yeah. Pro goes, those guys are great. Yeah. Um, I have to confess that at night on recycling night, my wife takes the containers out because I have a little trouble carrying them. But in the next day, when they empty them. They bring them up to the, our garage door because I asked them, and they said, absolutely. Now, I sometimes give them an annual gratuity, so that helps. I don't know how many people do that, but they are really great about it. Once they forgot, and I told the driver, and the guy got out of the truck and moved them up to the garage. And the only other comment I had about their service is when they use the clamshell, they don't get out of the truck and sweep the stuff off the road like it used to when we first moved here. Remember that? Yeah. The sunshine. There was a woman on that company. Sunshine today. And the guy would get out and sweep the road, but that, I, that's asking for concierge service, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Ray, can I address that? Um, based on the rates that we were provided, which had the maximum 5% at year five, the monthly rate would be twenty two eighty per month, which averages comes out to two seventy three sixty a month. That's in year five. What are we paying now? Right, right now you're paying two six two sixty five. Uh, pretty sure. Two sixty a year, and it would go up to two seventy three roughly a year based on. The Social Security check will pay for it. Anyone else for a comment? <laughs> yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Ken Rivera, and I work with, uh, uh, Ken, I mean, with uh, Chris here with Waste Pro. I just want to say, a, from a point of personal privilege, um, my career started here in this industry in Ocean Ridge. My first day on a truck in the back of a truck was in Ocean Ridge. My last day on a truck going to another co a company was in Ocean Ridge. So I'm here to tell you that uh, you're with a very good company. I've been with the company 15 years. I started in the back of a truck. My career started in Ocean Ridge, and for me, it's just a full circle. And I really appreciate the business, and we are looking forward to a much longer relationship moving forward. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, too. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Okay. Back to the commission. Anyone want to make a motion? So moved. Um, can we make the motion? Your motion to, to, to include the amendment. Yeah, so it's a per year. Yeah. Adjust. Do we need to do this resolution motion? What? See, it says adjust the motion. I move to adopt resolution. I guess. I guess we're going to just adjust it to make it annual. We make a new resolution, right? No, because we're going to amend the resolution. Right, so it would be to amend the resolution and the proposed amendment to have an annual increase based on CPI not to exceed 5%. Exactly. Yeah. So can we just say so move then? Yeah. So yeah. move. No, we, the painter said so move. So you have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And Thank we you. look forward to a great partnership. Appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, moving on to the next agenda item, an approval renewal of contract with hybrid inspections for contracting, building, department, and community development services. When? Thank you. The town currently contracts with uh, hybrid inspections for our building department services. This arrangement is working well, and we receive 
excellent service. Um, the town's received many compliments in the past 12 months regarding the service and uh, how well the building department has uh, moved forward during that time. The current contract expires in August, and we believe that it's in the best interest of the town to authorize the first amendment to the current agreement for a two-year term. Um, this would be a professional services agreement, which is why we are permitted to do it without uh, bidding. Okay. Public comment. Okay. Hearing none, back to the commission. Commissioner comment. All right. Anybody make a motion? I mean, the... The building department has turned a huge corner. Huge. From, huge. So it's. The last I heard it was th three weeks instead of three months to get a permit. Yeah. Yeah. Not always, but. <laughs> All right. So I move to approve the First Amendment at the Professional Services Agreement with High Bird Inspections. Second. second. <laughs> okay. Who's first? Dave, you get the second in? All right. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. All right, moving on to the committee, staff and committee reports. Lynn? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, June has been very, very busy. Uh, we had our most recent uh, pre-construction meeting with FDOT on the ARPA project, and I'm happy to say that you will begin to see work on that project uh, starting next week. Um, July 8th, they will start moving equipment and materials in and staging them with the boring company uh, being in town to be following to begin the underground work. Um, I've also been working diligently for quite some time on the website redesign. Um, we should launch that by the end of July. And I think you will find that the e information is far easier to find and you <coughs> really like the updated look and feel. It has a um, very sea turtle uh, friendly motif. And so I hope everyone really likes that. Um, preliminary appraised property values for the town increased by 9.4%, um, which is lower than our increases over the last two years. Um, the slow growth is attributed to the higher interest rates, which have slowed down the spec construction market as it has become more expensive for developers. Overall, the town saw an increase of nearly $133 million in taxable value. $10.4 million of that is in new construction. It's important to understand that of that $133 million in increased taxable value, there is some narrowing of the difference between taxable value and market value. As for non-homesteaded homes, that cap is at 10%. So if they're Appraised value did not go up 10%. Um, the property appraiser went ahead and started moving towards the cap. Uh, homesteaded homes are capped at 3%. So if your home did not increase by more than 3% in taxable value, you will have still seen at least a 3% increase in your taxable value because of that portion of the state law that requires it. As many of you have seen, the new generator at the tropical pump station has arrived and been awaiting uh, Placement. Unfortunately, we dealt with several delays, but it is now in place and we are just working on getting the final um, lines all hooked up. And um, we are also, as staff, working to review our current fee schedule um, that will be coming during the August budget workshop for some changes to the fee schedule and how we do things, as well as some things that. Um, we currently do not delineate out on our fee schedule it needs to be um, accounted for. Um, that is all I have uh, for now. Um, Any questions for Lynn? Yeah, old ocean lights. We are waiting on their team to put up the additional shields. Um, they've, they've agreed to put up the shields. They are still discussing it. Um, I. I'm staying on top of it with uh, Amy Kemp, who is my contact, because I'm also working with her on the East Ocean Light Project, as well as ensuring that all the lights, all the rest of the lights in town get replaced as we have scheduled. Thanks. Anyone else? With the new website, will we be posting the audit report? Because 
Yes. So that's what, yeah. It's pretty yeah. old. One it's there, right? it's old. I had put up last year's, but it did not end up in the same place, and so it was very difficult to find, as well as oh. the budget. So we will be getting the budgets and the audits um, caught up and getting them posted. Great. Thanks. All right. All right. Thank you, Lynn. Yep. Christy. No report this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, uh, my report's in your docket. If you have any questions, the EMS report concluded. We have the answer. Um, I would like to remind everybody that uh, Officer uh, Deb, Bottom K and I Gas are accepting uh, back to school school supplies all the way up until she said August first. So July thirtieth. Um, those are some of the items they're looking for. It benefits the uh, Guardian and Light Up program for Bobby County. All right. Any questions for the chief? Well, thank you so much, Chief. All right. So, town commissioner comments. I don't see any on there. Anybody have any comment? Nope. It's good. And I guess I thank everybody for coming. I look forward to Betty Bingham Day coming up. Happy July Fourth. Happy July Fourth coming up as well. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Where's the cake and ice cream? We need flowers. We're here too long today. Okay.